Hello everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name's Tina, I'm a DIYer and I am on a mission to make over my dining room this week. Last week we thrift flipped my dining table, which honestly turned out so much better than I thought it would. It turned out exactly like my inspiration, so in case you missed it, make sure you go back to see how I did it. And this week we are gonna complete the room and one of the biggest challenges about this is that it's actually not a room. It's one big open floor plan, so we have the dining room, the living room, and all also our kitchen in there and we basically just designated this third of that open floor plan to be the dining room so I really want to find a way to make it stand on its own and I do have a couple of DIYs in mind to make that happen so I'm planning on building that today and we also have a huge empty wall which I honestly don't know what to do with I've been having the hardest time trying to make my mind of what I want to do with it so it's been very overwhelming but I know we were going to figure it out so let's get into this makeover and transform this space I quickly want to show you guys my mood board. So usually when I'm designing a room, I start with Pinterest and I just basically pin whatever I like. Then you can kind of see what style you're going for. And I usually like to take a couple of those pictures and put it onto my mood board and build around that. So that's basically how I drew inspiration to building my table last week. And for my mood board, you can kind of see that we're going for a pretty neutral Japandi style dining room. We're incorporating a lot of wood and neutral tones. For me personally, the dining room has always kind of been a backdrop for different special occasions. It kind of serves as a base and I like to layer in different colors and textures throughout the year depending on the season and also the holiday. But also I don't want it to be too modern or too minimal so I added in a vintage style rug and also a vintage style mirror. It's a nice way to juxtapose everything and bring in different elements because I do have a lot of woods going on in here. And I also wanted to really incorporate a Japanese panel. I've been looking all over on Facebook Marketplace and I just cannot find the perfect one right now. So that is definitely something that I'm on the hunt for. And in the past, I actually would put off doing a makeover until I had every single piece for it. But that is honestly not realistic because if I waited until then, I probably would never have a dining room to sit at. I've been really enjoying kind of going at a slower pace for all these makeovers. And I know that with time, I will continue to grow into it because it's always a work in progress. So that is what I'm going for. And one of the pieces on here, we're actually going to DIY. So I'm gonna start with that first. We are going to start by making a skinny console table. I think this is a great way to separate the living from the dining area. I was super inspired by this photo that I saw on Pinterest. I just love the wavy detailing on it. This one is way too small and also very pricey. So I decided that we could DIY one that will be the exact length of my couch. That way it will fit perfectly. This build should be pretty simple. And I actually got a comment recently on one of my videos that asked, how I choose the wood that I use for my projects because I know it can get super overwhelming when you're there and it honestly just depends on what type of project you're working on. A lot of times I will use common board, which you totally could for this project. It's pretty smooth, but I do find that a lot of times the wood isn't as nice and there's lots of like knots and stuff on it. You also have to sand it down quite a bit. So for this project, I'm going with select pine. And something about select pine is just way nicer. The way that they cut it is just a lot straighter and smoother. I also just love the wood grain on it and once you've seen it, it's also really pretty. It is a little bit more expensive than common board but super worth it because you're getting a much nicer finish. For the wavy parts, I was actually planning on cutting my own but then once I was at the store, I spotted this which is a squiggly roofing material. I've actually been seeing a lot of people DIYing with this. I've always wanted to use this, but my hesitation is that it is a little bit on the thicker side. So I always thought I would have to use a table saw to cut it down because the width is a little bit thicker than I would like. But after laying it down on here, I think it'll actually be perfect. I won't have to finesse it too much. I think it's gonna work out great. So I'm very excited about this and I will have this link below for you guys. And lastly, I got some legs. So these are already pre-made, but you could totally use just regular poplar or any other square dowels that you see at the store. They were out of stock of the ones that I really wanted, so I just ended up getting this because size-wise, I think it looks the best. It does come with the part that you screw on top, but I'm pretty sure I can just remove that. Yay, it's working. Oh, okay. So now I just have to cut this down like just about an inch. 
and it'll be the perfect height for the table. This is totally a project that you could do in one day or even over a weekend since it's a pretty simple build. Using this wiggle trim just makes it so much faster because cutting out a smaller wavy pattern like this is definitely not easy to do with a jigsaw. Trust me, I've tried it before and it's really hard not to mess it up. Okay, so change of plans. I, for some reason, thought this wasn't gonna work, so I took them out, but I'm actually going to screw them all back in. I'm just gonna make them a little bit lower so that it'll actually fit the width of the board. So that actually saves me a little bit more time and now I'm just going to sand everything and make sure everything is nice and smooth and then we can assemble it. And you guys know I love duping projects and I always want to share projects that can easily be recreated. So using materials and products like this definitely just make it so much more approachable. Once everything is sanded down, it looks so much nicer and I went ahead and just started building out the table by tightening the legs. And to attach the trim, I'm just using wood glue and brand nails. I don't know about you guys, but I love the look of mismatched wood tones and I just think that mixing different tones just adds in a layer of depth and interest and this is definitely going to do that. so early these days and I can't believe the year is almost over. December is definitely a time of self-reflection for me. I set a lot of goals for the new year. I'm sure a lot of you are doing the same thing, especially now that it's getting busier with the holiday season and it gets a little bit more stressful. So I want to take this time to remind you guys to slow down and also take time to set aside for yourself as well. One of my biggest goals that I had this year that I'm carrying into the new year is to do more self care and also to sleep better. I am a night owl so this is a little bit of a struggle for me but I've been doing more sleep meditations. I don't know how I didn't know this before but I discovered that Audible actually has a huge selection of sleep and wellness originals. I'm a big Audible fan and they are so kindly sponsoring today's video. Aside from the thousands of audiobooks they have on there, they also have originals as well as podcasts. The originals they have under their sleep category is so good and I think it's honestly helped me with my mental health just being able to go to sleep feeling more calm and then waking up feeling refreshed. There's something about doing a guided meditation at night that makes you just feel so ready to take on the next day. This one is my favorite at the moment. It is Crystal Bowl Breathing by The Big Quiet and it is so good that I feel like I'm floating when I'm doing the meditation and I'm sure if you guys meditate then you know what I'm talking about. There's also a bunch of bedtime stories on there if that's more your vibe. I just recently listened to one by Kiki Palmer. Palmer. She has like the best narration voice. It gives you those ASMR feels and you just get sleepier and sleepier as she continues the story. So I love this one. And there's also one by Nick Jonas on here that I want to try out next. I will list these below if you want to check them out. And if you haven't tried Audible yet, you can get a free trial with my link in the description box, or you can text Tina Lay 30 to 500, 500. I honestly hope you guys will try out some of these meditations because it honestly is such a great way to treat yourself. This is one of my biggest pet peeves is when I'm opening packages. There's like all these little bits of styrofoam and you have to vacuum all of it. Please let this be a good wood color. Oh, oh my God. Oh. On the website, this looked more like a light, like yellowy pine color, but this is more like a light oak, which is actually so perfect. So you might notice that my little sofa and light are on this side because we actually just put up our Christmas tree. So I'm incorporating it onto this wall for now. Like I mentioned before, this wall has honestly stumped me because it's where the stairs are. So it has this angle to it. I had an idea to do shelves up to the ceiling. So maybe that's something that we can do in the future. But for now, I just want it to be 
functional. And I definitely want to live with it a little bit longer because now that we have a table, we have less walking room along this wall. So I really want to see how this is going to work. One thing I really wanted to add though was some more storage. So this sideboard is going to give us so much more storage. It's also going to serve as like a little bar cart. If all the parts come in a box like this thrown together, you know it's gonna take forever. Let's get started. assistant is here. Number six is finished. Did you guys know that with these cam screws, you're supposed to hold onto the plastic part and then screw, cause then it moves. Wait, this one doesn't do that. Maybe it will. And then this will spin while you have grip on it because I didn't know until this year. I've never done that. <laughs> Try it. Ow, my fingers. Did it work? I'm gonna do the old method. Bad. Okay, let's time this. Right now it is 12.30. Let's see how long it takes us. I stink. I just came home from the gym, but <laughs> thank you for sitting with my stench. I'm pretty sure if I built this by myself, it would have taken eons, but thankfully this is basically like building an Ikea piece, which we are very familiar with. So this kind of flew by quickly. My vision for the sideboard is to put a mirror on it so that it could bounce off more light and making the area feel even bigger. And of course, functionally, it's going to house all the unsightly things that we have floating around in the living room and the kitchen. Comment below what you guys put in your random sideboards and cabinets around the house because I'm very curious to know. And on top, it could serve as a buffet or a bar, but I think I'm gonna put a little cute tea set on it. One day, I do hope to get a Biobu screen and we are possibly going to Japan next year. So fingers crossed, I will find one on our travels and bring it back to start style in this corner. It's been about an hour and we are almost done. Brian's working on the drawers and I'm gonna attach different legs to this. So legs can really make or break a piece and I feel like this is just super modern, like mid-century modern and very trendy from like five years ago. So I'm gonna switch it to these and I just love the rounded shape of them. It gives a little bit more of a vintage feel and will also soften up all of the harsh edges that are on the piece. This is such an easy switch and I can always save these for a future project. I need to find the right stain, but maybe it'll look okay later. That just took us a little over two hours, which honestly is not too bad. And the legs look so good on there. It looks so much more expensive than it actually is. I love it. This is exhibit A of why I need more storage because we've been using our kitchen counters as storage. I also have a printer and office supplies in here. And then usually we'll just cook on this side and leave all of this stuff on this side. You might have noticed that a lot of the images that I was pinning had those beautiful rice paper lanterns, which you guys know that I've been loving. It just really helps set a mood and soften up the space. So I got one for the dining room. This one is pretty big. I don't know if you could tell, but it's about 24 inches. Adding a light is another one of those tricks to help separate a space. So this is gonna feel separate from the living room. And using this type of light is pretty renter friendly. It comes as a plug in light so you can just swag it onto the ceiling but i actually ended up buying another light kit so that we can hang it up as a pendant and i'm also going to be using a rechargeable light for this let's see how big this is i love all the waves on this and the color is perfect oh my oh i thought you needed my help oh that's so big <laughs> And there we go. Wow. <laughs> wow, I kind of wish I made it for like this wall. Now. You can sit on it. No, 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 no,
over the table? Let's try. Okay. Perfect fit. How freaking cute is this? Before I put up the light, I just had to make sure that everything was going to be in the correct place so I can center the light above the table. And after seeing this table in place, I'm so glad that I went with kind of a lighter wood tone because now the living room is kind of flanked by two light woods and then we have kind of a more darker wood in the center with the chairs. There's also plenty of room to walk in between everything. So this is gonna be perfect. So whether you swag this light over or use a pendant kit like I am, you still have to make two holes into the ceiling. So I think it's worth it to go the extra mile to make it look like an actual fixture. And that way you won't have a cord hanging down the wall, but honestly, both ways work and will instantly heighten any room. because I totally forgot to, so I had to take it off, put it back on. I think this is a pretty good height, and while we're here, I'm also going to put up the rug. This actually came in a box, and it came very quickly because I got a washable rug. I was thinking about doing a jute rug since those are pretty easy to clean for dining rooms, but then I saw this washable option, so I just had to try it out. Ooh, the pattern's so pretty. I really love all the tones in this, and I think adding in a rug is definitely going to make this feel like its own little dining area. Let's just hope it doesn't leave a bunch of lines once we unfold it. about the new dining room. I would love to hear your thoughts on it. I feel like it's just so much more warm and inviting. It's also really calming and I think that this light totally just brought the whole thing together. Everything has its own separate space but still flows together really nicely so I'm really happy with how this turned out. There's definitely more that I want to do in here but that will come with time and if you guys want to see how we decorate everything for the holidays, I am going to do that in next week's video. This honestly is a perfect setup to make it all cozy and festive so if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on future videos. Don't forget to check me out over on Instagram if you haven't already. I post on there every single day. It's been quite the journey to get here, so thank you guys so much for watching. Stay inspired, and I will see you in the next one. Bye!